In September of 2021, two 19-year-old students who were pursuing their bachelors of computer science at Stanford decided to drop out. And they did this to start an online grocery delivery startup in India. And this was a bold move. It was a risky move. But in less than a year's time, this company had taken India's startup ecosystem by storm. And they did this by irreversibly changing the way that groceries are delivered in the country. So far, they've raised almost $160 million at the time of us filming this video and are currently valued at $570 million. This startup's name, of course, is Zepto, India's biggest trendsetter in the exciting world of instant grocery delivery. Now, when I say exciting, what I mean is exciting for us, the consumers. But for Zepto's competitors, for the incumbents in this space, exciting probably isn't the right word. Embarrassing? Maybe. Threatening? Definitely. So threatening, in fact, that Grofers, a grocery delivery company that's been around since 2013, rebranded themselves recently to Blinkit to signal their intent to enter the instant grocery delivery space in order to stay relevant and competitive. Then we also have hyperlocal delivery startup Dunzo's response to Zepto, which was to go out and raise fresh venture capital from Reliance Retail in order to keep up. And then out of nowhere, we have Ola too, launching Ola Dash, setting up dark stores and promising 10 minute delivery. So everybody seems to want a piece of this pie, but let's zoom out for a second here because there's a couple of questions that we need to ask. And the first of them, of course, is why? Why is this happening? And why now? Coming back to Ola, they had tried to do online grocery delivery with Ola Store and Ola Foods, neither of which worked out for them. Zomato did the same thing with Zomato Market during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, but they ended up exiting the space a few months later while their biggest competitor, Swiggy, had stayed on the bandwagon and now they're one of the most popular options in the instant delivery space thanks to Swiggy Instamart. And then the next question that we need to ask here is whether this instant online grocery delivery model is sustainable or not. Is this a bubble that's going to burst at some point? A bubble within the larger online grocery delivery space? Or is 10 minute or less online grocery delivery the future? Is it here to stay? And I'm gonna be answering all of these questions and more coming up right after this. So right off the bat, I wanted to point out that this isn't just something that's happening here in India. This phenomenon of instant grocery delivery is something that we're seeing around the world. For example, just last year, Turkey-based instant grocery delivery startup Getter became the country's second unicorn. And in Europe, Berlin-based Gorillas became the entire continent's fastest unicorn in just nine months. Then in the United States, we have Joker, which like Gorillas was started in 2021 and is already a unicorn. And the interesting thing here is that all of the startups that I've just mentioned are delivering groceries. They're all instant grocery delivery startups. They're not delivering restaurant food like Zomato and Swiggy. They're not delivering anything or everything like Amazon and Flipkart. They're focused almost exclusively on groceries, which sort of answers our first two questions here. Why is this happening and why now? Before 2020, and more specifically before the COVID-19 pandemic, grocery shopping was an offline activity. That's how people in the world, and more specifically people here in India, thought about it. You go to the grocery store, the kirana, the market, you fill up your basket or your poly bag, and you bring it home. That's how grocery shopping has been done for decades, probably centuries even. This ritual of going out to buy things from physical locations has been deeply ingrained in Indian society and societies around the world. And I mentioned Ola Store and Ola Foods earlier, but they weren't the only ones who failed to change this. There was also Flipkart Nearby and Pepper Tap, early entrants into the grocery delivery space that were shut down because they just couldn't get enough people to stop shopping for groceries offline and switch to online. Of course, all of that changed in 2020 when lockdowns kept people indoors for months. And even after that, a lot of people were choosing not to go to crowded indoor spaces where they were likely to contract COVID-19 and then bring it home and infect their families. And so all of a sudden, from a struggling industry, online grocery delivery exploded. It became one of the hottest markets to be in. 
to the point where two of the largest online grocery delivery players here in India, Big Basket and Grofers, were getting more orders than they could handle. Today, in 2022, we're getting things delivered instantly, but in 2020, items were going out of stock instantly. And many people, myself included, were waiting for groceries for days. And just like that, consumer behavior that should have taken a couple of years to change was permanently altered in the span of a couple of months. Now, while all of this was going on, Adit Palicha and Kaivalya Vora, the founders of Zepto, started working on something. A solution to the backlog of grocery orders during the pandemic. A platform called Kirana Cart. And they noticed something really interesting while they were building this. Any time that they delivered groceries in 10 minutes or less, customer retention saw a huge spike. They discovered an untapped market segment here that they knew would give them an unfair advantage, even though they were new entrants into that market. They were convinced enough that they dropped out of Stanford, quit working on Kirana Card, and started Zepto, which was the catalyst for this instant grocery delivery movement that we're seeing here in India today. So we're gonna get back to the video in just a second, don't worry. But before we do, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this video's sponsor, Taskade, because they've actually had a pretty big impact on how we do things here at Backstage with Millionaires. So Taskade is an all-in-one collaboration tool for remote teams to chat, organize, and get things done. And that's what we are here at Backstage with Millionaires. We're a remote team of people working on videos like the one you're watching from across India. And so we use Taskade to get these projects finished. So we first heard about Taskade last year, about six months ago. And I kid you not, we have been using it for every single project since. We use it for organizing, assigning, and keeping track of tasks within projects. And we also use it to create lists of items to discuss during team meetings. And trust me guys, before we discovered Taskade, things were super chaotic, confusing, and messy over here at Backstage with Millionaires. We are a team of eight people and we were exclusively using WhatsApp for all of our projects. We didn't know who was doing what, when they needed to be finished by, deadlines, tasks. It was a mess. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we've started to become pretty consistent lately with our posting schedule and we're posting more videos than usual. And Taskade has helped a lot in making that happen. It helps us to stay organized, especially now that we have multiple projects in the works at any given time. What's more, we know exactly which phase each project is in and who's doing what. Taskade has become our go-to place to get a bird's eye view on all of our projects and also to get a detailed view of each and every process that's happening within those projects. Now, one thing that I love about Taskade is that it's super easy to use. It's really intuitive, it's user-friendly, and that allows team members who have never used Taskade before to jump in and get started right away. That being said though, don't let the simplicity of Taskade fool you because there's a lot of power user features under the hood. For example, Taskade offers you multiple views to keep track of projects as you see fit. There's a board view, there's a calendar view, there's a personal task tracker. And if some of your projects follow a repetitive formula, then you can make things easier by creating a project template that all of your team members can follow. And this is a feature that we've used here at Backstage with Millionaires quite a lot because a lot of our videos follow a formula. We have our top 10 series, we have our weekly news series, we also have our weekly meetings, which we have in projects. So it's really, really useful for us. And I haven't even told you guys the best part yet. This all-in-one collaboration platform is available to the first 1,000 Backstage with Millionaires viewers who click on the link in the description or pinned comment down below at a 100% lifetime discount. That means that Taskade will be free for you for a lifetime. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description or pinned comment down below to sign up and then use the coupon code BW to get your Taskade subscription for free forever. And thanks to Taskade for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now we've answered those first two questions. Why is this happening and why is it happening now? So the third question that we need to answer is, is this sustainable? Is this a bubble that's going to burst? Or is there actually a way for these startups to generate profits at some point? Because remember, food delivery giants like Swiggy and Zomato are loss making, and they don't plan on generating profits anytime soon. And so you'd think that that would be the same way with instant delivery startups. But in reality, many of these companies, both within India and abroad, are planning on generating profits very soon if they haven't already. Take for example, Turkey's Getter, which was started in 2015, or Czech Republic-based Rolik, which was started in 2014. 
These guys have already become profitable, both of them in 2021, and are now expanding overseas. Now, neither one of these, of course, are Indian companies, but I still want to look at what makes them different from food delivery startups like Swiggy and Zomato. Why are instant grocery delivery startups able to crack the profitability problem while food delivery startups aren't? Well, before we go there, before I answer that question, we first need to understand what even are online grocery delivery startups? How do these businesses operate? And to answer that question, I'm going to compare them to offline stores, just regular grocery stores, because they actually both require quite a bit of upfront expenditure. For online grocery delivery, you need warehouses to store inventory. And for offline stores, you, of course, need the store. And whether you're renting or buying this store, a physical location that's going to attract a lot of footfall in the long term is going to be expensive in the short term, which is one of the reasons why offline stores tend to have very slim margins. I'm talking between 1% and 3%, because a lot of their revenue ends up being spent on their premium location. The better the location, the more customers they attract. It's a double-edged sword. Online grocery delivery startups, on the other hand, are often able to achieve margins as high as 10% because they don't have to worry about premium locations. Their warehouses, which are called dark stores because they're not accessible to customers, are located in parts of the city where they're close enough to the target customer, but far enough away from the premium areas that rent is affordable. And remember here too that these are tech startups we're talking about, so using the data that they're getting from thousands thousands of orders every single day, they're able to pinpoint the exact location that a dark store would generate the most amount of revenue with the least amount of expenses possible. While traditional offline stores, well, there's usually a bit more guesswork involved in choosing their location. Now, this is where things get interesting, because this optimization that has become fundamental to the success of this instant grocery delivery category actually makes deliveries cheaper the faster they get. Let me repeat that. As deliveries get faster, they get cheaper, not more expensive, which probably seems counterintuitive. In a nutshell, the faster you do the deliveries, the cheaper it gets. This is because by doing it faster, the amount of deliveries per rider goes up 2 to 3x as compared to food delivery. Last mile delivery costs for us also get reduced due to this. The fuel costs too are comparatively low as the deliveries are happening within localities. Our mature stores have started inching towards operating profitability in just 5 months of launch. That was Adit Balicha, by the way, one of the co-founders of Zepto, for those of you all who are listening to this as a podcast. But basically, this is where economies of scale start to become super relevant to the success of instant grocery delivery. See, once you've achieved the optimal distribution of dark stores in a given area, those areas become profitable. Whereas with food delivery companies like Zomato and Swiggy, the distance between restaurants and the end customer are wider, and with the exception of cloud kitchens, outside of the startup's control. And so you lose time, you lose money, and you lose the opportunity to be profitable. Now, the next component here, which we haven't talked about yet, is of course venture capital. And in the past, VCs were hesitant to put money into online grocery delivery because the cost of acquiring new customers and the cost of changing consumer behavior was astronomical. And so the long-term prospects of these startups and the likelihood that they were going to 10x their investors' money quickly was very slim. Now though, with the pandemic doing all of the work on the consumer behavior front, the path to skyrocketing valuations, lucrative exits, and even diversification is a lot more clear for VCs, and so they're far more interested in investing. And coming back to that word for a second, diversification, once an instant delivery startup has a network of well-positioned dark stores, and once they're a name that consumers are familiar with, then they can sell pretty much anything. Medicine, electronics, food, the same way that Zomato and Swiggy do, clothes, beauty products, I mean, there's really no limit here. And imagine if, instead of the same day or next day shipping that you often get with Amazon or Flipkart, it was 10 minute delivery. That is a powerful idea, and it's one of the reasons why so much money is being pumped into this space right now. Now, I know I've painted a pretty rosy picture here, and if you're the kind of person who's been dreaming of starting up, then you might be thinking to yourself, why not instant grocery delivery, right? But I should note that there are still a lot of naysayers out there. Not everybody is sold on or happy with this new trend. Some people, for example, worry about the health and safety of delivery drivers. Some people are worried about the effect that this is going to have on society because we're already super impatient people now because of smartphones where information and communication are just a couple of taps away. And then other people are worried that this market might already be too crowded. 
Consumer behavior was changed thanks to the pandemic, but each individual startup still needs to win the instant grocery delivery popularity contest. And they're all fighting tooth and nail to onboard, retain, and poach customers, which of course is very expensive. And we saw what happened back when the food delivery space was in the same stage. Tiny Owl, Food Panda, Uber Eats, they lost that battle. And Swiggy and Zomato were victorious. So while this space is definitely an exciting one right now, and the opportunity here is massive, India's e-grocery market, by the way, is estimated to be worth $25 billion by 2025. And Red Sear has estimated that India's quick commerce sector is gonna grow 10 to 15X what it is right now to become a $5 billion market by 2025. I myself will not be throwing my hat in the ring. I'm happy to sit back, eat my popcorn, and watch these startups duke it out. But anyways, guys, that is enough from my side. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires. I hope you guys learned something from it, and I will see you in the next one.